Well, hey everyone, it's a new week. It's a new update. We have some whips. We have some FOs. We have a couple of shares. Thank you. And of course, our temperature blanket update. So I so, was watching Caroline. Her channel is Caroline for the love of crochet. And she did a tag with people showing their crochet carts. And after watching her cart and seeing how she gets to sit and relax in her recliner, I'm like, I gotta have one of those. So I got myself one. And I'm not completely set up yet, but I'm getting there. So on this top shelf, I just have this that needs to be frogged out and stuff for my temperature blanket. I got some scissors and a pen over here. Uh, a stray hook. <laughs> On the second shelf, I have my current fillet project that I'm working on. And on the bottom shelf is the temperature blanket. Now it fits for now. Once they get a little bigger, I'm not sure how well this will work out. But it allows me to just wheel this little baby out there, sit in my glider rocker or in the recliner or wherever I want to and have everything right there at my fingertips. So that's one thing that happened this two weeks. So my goodness, it has just been a hectic two weeks. Um, I wanted to be outside again today, but it's like a steam bath out there. We had just about every day this week, we've had rain and we got some rain during the night last night. So as soon as the sun came out this morning, it's like instant steam bath. It is awful out there. It's like, I feel like, oh, like my, I feel like my skin can't breathe. Just, I'm hot. Even with the air on, and I've got the ceiling fan going and I'm just like, I'm hot. Just, ugh. So you're not getting any Toby time today because Toby is in time out. He has been pretty feisty with me. He's been biting my hands um, very aggressively. So I've ordered him some um, kitten teething chew toys so that hopefully he will leave my hands alone. I mean, I don't, I don't mind him playing, but when he starts to bite hard, that's, it, I, I don't go, I don't like that. I just, I want you to be a nice, lovable, pet me, little kitty, you know, play with me with my toys, but I don't like the aggressiveness, and I have to get on everybody else about don't play rough with him, because then he's going to think that's what it's like, and I'm the one that spends the most time with him, so it gets taken out on me. So Toby's in timeout today, for a little while anyways. Okay, so... Um, we completed three projects this week, or this two weeks. One was the, um, viewer requested Granny Square, the Star Granny Square messenger bag. And I don't have that to show you because Jenna's using it. And I knew she would want it. She, she's not a bag person, but she really likes it. So she can have it. That's one less thing I have to worry about being in my way. I'm like actually regretting getting my hair cut now. I can't get it off my neck. <laughs> um, the other thing that we finished, and if you didn't see the video story about this bag, you need to see it because it's got a pretty epic ending to it. But it was, oh my goodness, this Prada inspired bag. I have a towel in there so that you can see the, the triangle. Ugh. I need gloves. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this bag, it's a pretty good sized. It has the uh, two handles. And that, that would probably be make a good beach bag, but they bill their $1,990 bag as a market bag. 
Yeah. I said $1,990. That is ridiculous. That's what made me click on the ad to look at it. I'm like, are you kidding me? I wish I could crochet a bag and sell it for $1,990. The next thing that we have that we finished is my um, my uh, new pattern. The little uh, kitty cat baby blanket in filet. It's three kitties wide and four, t four, I almost mispronounced that, and four kitties tall. Um, this one took me a little while because, uh, you know, when you're doing a project that there's a lot of counting, it's, you can't watch something interesting on TV. You know, you can throw the news on that's not going to make you look that you only need to hear it. You can, uh, I don't know, put something, music, something to where it's not going to draw your attention away from what you're doing. And you really shouldn't, if you're tired, work on something that depends on the counts to make the pattern come out right. It's not like mindless crocheting. So <clears throat> I did a little bit of frogging with this a couple of times. And it was funny because it was the, the same part that I probably messed up in that section like three different times. I just, I was having a, a bad couple of days, but I finally got it taken care of, finally fixed it. It's finally finished. And I do have the pattern available in my Etsy shop. And I did not do a border on this because of the way I did the, the, the outline. I didn't feel that it needed a border, but you could always add a border if you wanted to add a border. I mean, that would be a way to give it a second color, you know, by adding a border. But uh, really it's an easy pattern to do. And it's a lot of mostly double crochet and then, you know, the filet makes the outline of the, the cat and the squares. But, uh, yeah, for some reason, I, I just struggled with that one. I'd show you my whip. Well, I did say that I had whips, so I guess I'll show it to you. Even though I'm doing a video in bits and pieces on this one. So you can't see a whole lot of it yet, but this is the beginning of it. And it's almost time to add another skein. I don't know if I have another full row left. See, I just unfolded that and made all my, my yarn come undone. I don't have, know if I have another full row left on this or not. So I'll probably end this skein there to, and add on a new skein so that I don't have to have a knot or a join in the middle of the row. So, but yeah, I'm liking how this is coming out so far. This one's going to be a pretty one. Unfortunately, all I had left in a DK weight was white or black. And I'm like, a black baby blanket? Not so sure about that. So I'm doing it in white. And I was a bad girl this morning. Premier has a pretty good sale going on. And... There's this other project that I want to do. And of course, my 5,000 skeins of yarn is not right for the project. None of it. Now, I have some that would be, say, the right size, the right weight of yarn. But the colors, bleh, I can't, I don't have enough of... The, uh, I don't have enough. You need five colors, and I don't have enough of each color that would look good together to do the project. So, Premier has the sale. So, I ordered some yarn. And I know, I keep saying I want to do this stuff without having to buy yarn, but uh, I'll be darned if I don't have the right things on hand. I have a whole crap ton of worsted weight and hardly any DK. I don't have any uh, 
sport weight, you know, uh, my cotton is getting low. My, um, well, I have a lot of cotton, but I don't have enough to do like big projects. There, th that cotton will be good for doing the, the, the little amigurumi projects. So, I mean, it's not going to go to waste. It, it'll it have a use for it. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the other stuff and I'm like, why do I even have it? Because you buy it with something in mind and then you end up not, <laughs> at least I end up not using it for its intended purpose. Because I just can't stay focused. It's like, I want to do this, but then I see this. So I want to do that. And then I want to do that. And I want to do that. And, and, that, and it's just like, I need to just make a list, make a list. Okay. So we did FOs. We did my one whip because I finished the others. And that leaves us to some shares. And then we will do the temperature blanket update. So this week we have two shares from Adrian and Susan. Thank you, ladies. I love seeing your projects. Now, Adrian is, she has shared with us before and she is doing Tiffany Hansen's crochet along and each month they change different stitches and she's had a couple of issues with like the stitches not like balancing out and making the the shape wonky. And she had uh, she had emailed me and asked for a little bit of help. So I went over to Tiffany's channel to see, okay, what is she doing? And then I tried a couple of rows and, you know, without being there and really seeing it, it's kind of hard to like see if she's making an error or is this how it's supposed to be. But from what I read in the comments, a lot of people were having the same issue that she was having. And then in Tiffany's video, she was saying it will look wonky at first, but it's going to straighten itself out. So I think she, you know, was kind of like me. If it doesn't look perfect right off the bat, there's got to be something wrong. But that's not always the case. But anyways, Adrienne's blanket is beautiful. She is caught up through April and into May. They're doing the basket weave stitch, which that's one of my favorites, but it's so thick and heavy unless you use like a really large hook and so that it's loose. It won't have much movement because it's, it's a nice, beautiful, thick stitch. So those people that live in the really cold climates, which I do not, that is a great stitch for a blanket. It is a yarn eater, but it is a really nice stitch. So thank you, Adrian, for sharing with us again. And then I believe this is Suzanne's first share. She is a knitter who loves to crochet and she is in the Netherlands. And this is her first ever temperature blanket and she's using her average temperatures. Now in her email, she commented she thought that their averages were boring, but I think her blanket's beautiful. And I think she's very fortunate that she's not changing having to change the color every single day and have all those ends to work in. So when I first thought about doing the temperature blanket and I had, uh, at first I was going to do the averages and then I decided that I wanted to do the comparison of my birth year versus current year. And I'm like, well, averages won't work. It won't be a good representation because I'm wanting to do like, show the effect of the climate change. Like how much hotter is it now than it was back then? So I changed my mind and went to the highs. And then that of course caused me to have to order more yarn. And I was like, well, if I uh, don't change colors more often than every 10 degrees, I'm just gonna have this giant block in the middle of the blanket and so I adjusted it again and went to the five degree mark, which again caused me to have to order more yarn. And because we got a cool snap 
early in the year when I was in the process of ordering it, I ordered oh, a lot more cooler color, cooler weather colors than what I am going to end up needing. And it's looking like a couple of the colors that are for the hotter temperatures that I'm not going to have enough, which means I'm going to have to spend more money on more yarn for this project. I really... <sighs> I really think I should have consulted an expert on... Um, like how to select the temperature ranges and how to select the colors because the way I did it, I was thinking that I was going to have a lot more of the blues and greens in this blanket than what I have. And I pretty much have <sighs> yellows and browns. <laughs> so, um... So if I ever do another temperature blanket again, I will like majorly rethink this because doing the five degree temperature ranges instead of the 10, there are some days I'm changing color every single row, which initially is what I thought I wanted. But then you have all those ends. Now, if you're gonna turn your sides into a fringe, all those ends are helpful, but that wasn't the plan. I have to join these two together to make one large blanket so that they line up side by side. So I have to at least on one side of each of the two pieces have to work in all those ends so that that can be stitched together. And then I could possibly do a fringe, but that wasn't the original plan. But my DK yarn shortage, once this temperature blanket is done, I think I'm gonna have quite a bit of blues and greens left over, but these skeins that you get from Hobie, they're so small. You don't get much yardage on them. And when you're looking at it and you go, oh, that's a good price. But then when you see what you really get from it, it's like, no, that's not a good price. But it was like the only website that I could find that had a color variety, at least I thought, that I could get the different, all the different colors. But anyways, that, that's old news. All right, let's do the temperature blankets. All right, this one is current year and I am still attached because we don't know what today will bring yet. And we moved into a new month on this two week period. So we have our divider row, but we, oops, we had Four days from last month, all of them in the high 80 range, from 85 to 88. So that was all the same color. And then when we moved into May, we had one, two, three, four, five more days of the same color, which again, because of the ends of working in, I'm grateful for that. One day of the next color up, and then four days back to the high 80s color, which was cognac. Cognac and rust. And then with our, okay, so you can see we got like a solid block of the cognac. There's our dark brown divider, month divider, back into the cognac. One row of rust and more cognac. So the last month or so. Weather's been pretty steady, but now we're into hurricane season and like our springs are super dry here and summer we get a lot of rain. So what makes it miserable is the humidity from all that rain. Then my birth year, we, uh, did a lot of bouncing. One day this color, then that color, then back and forth. Did a lot of bouncing back and forth. That was the last four days of May. And we worked right into the first four days of June every other day. 
and then we had two days in a row of the same color bounce to the one and then four days of the same color no hold on i'm looking at the wrong temperatures so yeah the first three days of june was bouncing back and forth then we had one two three four days of the same color two days of another color and back to the cognac but i can tell you coming up in the next two weeks we're adding another color for the birth year because you know those temperatures i already know but i don't work ahead and get the whole thing done because then it wouldn't be any fun to show you the two weeks. All right, so this is birth year. And you can see all the bouncing back and forth between the cognac and the rust, which I think that May, so May is down here, starting with that dark brown. So May, through June on this blanket, is, or this side of the blanket, is a lot more interesting than this one because we get curry down here and then the rest of it is all rust and cognac. This one, at least we had a few days of egg yolk, cognac carried, or not cognac, curry carried up a little bit further into the month because it was cooler in my birth year than it is now. But then you get up into this section and it was actually um, a lot warmer that year than this year because the rust is a warmer color than the cognac. So go figure, must have been having a heat wave back then. All right, so let's take a look at the two two uh, halves of the blanket side by side and see that comparison. I have to get all set up for that. And of course, I will, as always, put birth year on the left and current year on the right. And if you have not seen the video about the uh, Prada-inspired bag, which you can't miss it because there's like flames behind me in the thumbnail. You have to watch it. You have to watch it to the end because the ending is like freaking epic. So go check that out right over here and I'll see you there.